which is a wonderful picture there of baboons warming themselves in the sun. They looked so contentedly happy, I suspect they've been eating all morning since they got up. Their tracks are all over the place, and we are currently sitting in the Umluamati drainage line. We are the first vehicle to drive through here since the rain, so I'm not entirely unconvinced that we will n need to be pulled out of here. A uh, very tired baboon, that one, of course. Got up very early, and you can just see those rather terrifying teeth. The rest of the troop was in that tree. In fact, there's some to the right-hand side and a little bit lower. Can you see them, Brian? There they are. And the rest will be on the ground still having breakfast. The mere mention of breakfast makes me hungry. Doesn't it make you hungry, Brian? It makes me starving. Still starving to the point of death. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that we won't be eating what the baboons ate, though which I suspect was a lot of sort of fairly tasteless grass seeds, um, possibly the odd worm. Maybe if they were lucky, they found a bone that had a little bit of meat left on it. But it is in this current sort of situation where you see them sitting reclining with their elbows up on their knees that they look so very human. That one's exhausted. And they could sleep up there, you know. They quite happily sleep on precarious branches like that. Somehow they maintain balance. It must mean that part of their brains remain active while they're asleep. I don't know if you've ever tried to, f or if you've ever fallen asleep standing up. Have you ever fallen asleep standing up, Brian? It's the most disconcerting thing because your legs just buckle underneath you. I've done it two or three times um, when I was obviously very tired and your legs just collapse. And to maintain balance when you're asleep, of course, I think for a human being is almost impossible. I mean, we've all had the experience of sitting on an aeroplane and suddenly finding the person next to you um, in a position that is, can only be described as far too close for comfort. And that's, of course, because we fall asleep and we lose all sense of balance. Now, these baboons are not the same. They are able to sit on a tree like this and fall fast asleep. This one is currently just observing for predators. Yes, you are. Hello. Can you see us? Of course you can. There's a little one coming up to the right now. Ah. Now, what we have there is um, what seems to be some sort of advertisement. Um, Kathy, you say, do we get monkeys here? Yeah, we do. We get one species. And that is the vervet monkey, about as often as we get baboons. Now, maybe a little bit more frequently than we get baboons. They are much smaller. They're about, I suppose, a really big one would be the size of that babyish baboon there. That's in, how would we describe that? That's the middle of the picture. And they're gray. And in Afrikaans, they're known as the de blow arp. A very descriptive language is Afrikaans, and de blow arp is blessed of blue testicles. That's why it's called a blow up. And they're very bright blue, and that's how you identify them if you're confused. But of course, they're the only monkey species that we get here. <laughs> 